Hello world, this is the Gadget Flow podcast, the show about everything related to products, entrepreneurship, marketing, and crowdfunding. This week, I got to chat with Priest Willis Sr. And Priest is the Senior Global Partnerships Manager at Lenovo. And basically, he specializes in creating amazing digital marketing and affiliate campaigns. He had a ton of great knowledge and insight into the world of digital marketing, and I know you will get a ton from it. So here is my interview with Priest Willis Sr. All right, I am here with Priest. Priest, thank you so much for being on the podcast this week, man. How you doing? I'm doing well, Alex. How are you, man? Thanks for having uh, me on. Absolutely. We're excited to uh, to have you on and to hear from you. And so just to get started, uh, for our listeners who may not know who you are yet, can you give us a little snapshot into who you are and what it is you do? Yeah, I'm I'm Priest Willis Sr. Uh, have a, I have to say that I have a boy that's 23 that if you search Priest Willis, you'll probably find him before me, which is embarrassing because I'm an internet marketer. <laughs> um, so I'm Priest Willis Sr. I am the Senior Global uh, Partnerships and Affiliate Manager at Lenovo. I've been there now for about five years, and I kind of manage all things partnership. We have a very large, intricate affiliate business. We work with several thousand affiliates and I just manage that whole ecosystem. Okay, cool, man. So I want to talk about what you do specifically at Lenovo and kind of your expertise there. But before we jump in there, can you give us just a little bit of story or the story and how you landed where you did? Like, what's your background? Yeah, yeah, good question. So uh, early on, I, you know, back in 96, I started to learn how to work on computers. Uh, My dad, him and I went out to a fairgrounds, we bought a computer. And uh, literally, him and I were learning together on how to put them together. And um, we spent hours behind it learning about the hard drives. At that time, you kind of soldered motherboards. Um, So we kind of worked on that a little bit. And over time, I really enjoyed it. So um, I started a small business on putting computers together and selling them. And then eventually, I got into drop shipping and drop shipping computers all across and started doing business with uh, Minneapolis, the city of Minneapolis and all kind of stuff. But it, it got to be a real drain. I mean, at some point, mm. you know, you get returns and people complain about systems, whether it's, you know, they because of their own surfing habits, they get viruses. So I wanted to do something that was less involved, at least from a customer facing perspective. And Mm -hmm. along the way, I was getting involved in affiliate marketing. I developed my own website. I would put banners up uh, with a friend um, and him and I started a form. And so I became an affiliate and I started to let the uh, computer building side of the business go go by the side and focus purely on being an affiliate, kind of making side money with, with Amazon. At that time, Amazon was one of the biggest and only affiliates that I was aware of. Um, in terms of having blinky banners up on my website, which was how it looked at the time. And uh-huh. uh, it, it slowly evolved into being an affiliate manager. So again, I was an affiliate and then moved over to the affiliate management side and helped other people become affiliates for other large companies like Buy Seasons, which at one point during the hol- Halloween season, they were bigger than Amazon. They would sell more costume wow. party party items than Amazon. So I was in that for over a decade. And then Lenovo reached out and said, look, we want to scale this uh, global affiliate thing. Will you come down and do it globally? And I had never done global affiliate marketing prior to that. So I thought that was the new next challenge for me. And so I've been there ever since. Nice, man. That's awesome. And I, I love that story. So, so give us just a snapshot, like on a day-to-day basis when, I mean, that just sounds so huge to all of us, (laughs) you know, like I think global digital market, you know, like affiliate, like it just sounds big. So like practically speaking on a day-to-day basis, what, what does your job look like? Like, what does that, what does that look like on a day-to-day basis? Yeah, so it is big and you you do need uh, team members. So we have uh, local people in the various regions. So we're in about 30 different countries and we, you know, I'm, you know, you hear the word strategy and people are like, yeah, strategy, whatever. But I am literally in a strategic role. So I no longer do day to day. I still talk with affiliates, work with affiliates when I go to events and speak at events. 
Um, they still connect with me to be a part of the program, but day to day, I am not working with affiliates directly. Typically, we have affiliate managers or at least web managers in the different locations. And those are the people that I'm talking to daily about the strategy. So where do we want to go big picture wise with Lenovo in this partnerships program? So every year I'm always creating this strategy deck, if you will. We of course have numbers that we look at that we did last year. Then we have forecasted numbers and then there's incremental growth that we have to build. I'm always focused on what do we do with the incremental growth? Where are the opportunities with that? So that is a daily job and no day looks the same. I mean, you know, every time there's always something different and in between there's maybe a fire or two. Uh Um, But that but that's my focus is always trying to drive the business bigger and bigger while the people in the geos are doing more blocking and tackling day to day. Got it. So that brings me to my first real question about like your position. I'm just curious, what are it maybe even just one of the biggest challenges you face frequently and how you overcome those challenges within your position? Yeah. So, so my particular position is all about the, you know, the success and failure of the program, mm-hmm. right? So we, you know, affiliate marketing at, at some point it plateaus on what affiliate marketing can be. So a lot of people, when you think of it, they think of coupons, they think of content guys. And then for the most part, that's it. So my job is always having to add layers to this business. So, and it has to always be growing, right? right. So you, you create this business, but you always have to add pieces and components to it and optimize it. So my, my job is figuring out how to do that. How do you grow this business that historically affiliate marketing is kind of in some respect known as a set and forget partnerships, if you will, the banners on the websites, and then you just sort of walk away right. um, because it's largely passive income. Well, how do I grow a business like that? How do I maintain partnerships in terms of finding new ones and scaling from there. So that's that's always a constant focus of mine. I don't know if there's necessarily problem areas for me. Um, you, you know, every, I think every day we're faced with something new or new challenge, whether it be attribution or something along those lines. But, you know, it's kind of all part of the business, if you will. So sure. Uh, I don't really see them as obstacles or, you know, big issues as much as, hey, this is just par for the course. Yeah, for sure. What what do you, I mean, I'm just curious what you have to say about working with people under you. Um, is yeah. that, how, how have you adjusted to that? Like, how has that been for you over the past few years? Yeah, you know, I, I so it seems like ever since, I mean, I was young and at Chuck E. Cheese and I was 15 and I felt like I was having people that worked with me. So all through my career at some level, I've always either worked closely with somebody, had a team under me um, and people worked with me. So at this stage, I'm 44 and it just seems natural um, just to have people work for me and collaborate with people. And what I found is, look, if you treat people um, with respect and, you know, you, you, you have a sense of loyalty to them as much as you can within business. Um, you know, th- they'll give it back to you and you, you, you treat people human, if you will, mm-hmm. um, then that'll be reciprocated. So I, you know, I enjoy working with the team that I have in place and, um, and us collaborating together. And, you know, I kind of pride myself on being able to say that they're, are some things that I just don't know, but I have a team of people that I can look at and lean on. And in some cases, some of them are a little bit younger. Um, They have different experiences that you can glean from. I think if you leave yourself as a, as a leader vulnerable to that versus thinking you should know everything, you know, I think it can be relatively successful. And I've had some pretty good success with the team at Lenovo and even before that point. Yeah. Absolutely, man. I think that's great advice. Um, what would you say is the worst piece of advice you hear about digital marketing um, that you would like to debunk or affiliate marketing or whatever whatever your expertise would, would like to speak on? What's the worst piece of advice you hear often? 
Yeah, yeah, that that's kind of a good question. And, uh, you know, I'll so, you know, we'll, we'll take it a little bit more niche than digital marketing, but I will look at affiliate marketing. And I think the worst piece of advice that I hear is something that I alluded to earlier was that affiliate marketing is solely about banners on a website and people clicking on the banners and then that's it. That's the relationship. And, you know, that that's that's the narrative that I'm changing in this role and just what I want to do in general in the industry is open this up more broadly for people to see that, you know, affiliate marketing is more than just banners and a guy in his basement or a gal in their basement, um, you know, just putting stuff up on their website and seeing if it works. You know, there's real B2B partnerships that we're establishing and working with other people. I mean, people truly can use affiliate marketing as their beachfront within their business. So you can do search engine marketing, SEO or search engine, uh, you know, organic search engine or any kind of different, you know, digital marketing tactic you can think of, Mm -hmm. email marketing. All of that can fold under the guise of performance marketing or affiliate marketing. So Mm -hmm. I think the biggest misnomer is that, you know, affiliate marketing and some of these other demand gen channels just have one pure focus and that's it. So people kind of throw the baby away with the bathwater. I think they need the the broadener perspective a little bit and see that, you know, some of these tactics offer a lot more layers for their business. Got it. I I hear that, man. I think that's a great point. So what are some tips uh, you can share with us for, you know, having a successful product or a successful affiliate campaign online? Like what is the maybe top one or two things you need in order to succeed in that in that way? Yeah. Yeah. So so the product is tricky. I mean, I you know, I heard that. um, What's that? What's that spray, Alex, where um, WD-40? Uh huh. Um, yeah, yeah. So I, I heard with WD forty. The reason why they call it that is because there were forty different iterations of it before they finally figured out which one they wanted to go with. Oh, so, okay. Right, product wise, you know, it's always kind of hard to tell people which is the right one. All I can really tell you, whether you're developing products, websites, systems, whatever it may be, is to continue testing until you find out which is the right one. Um, right. And this could be said for your your uh, digital marketing tactics too, right? Just test. If something isn't working out, that doesn't necessarily mean you quit. You just slightly adjust whatever it is you're doing and try something new or different. So um, I know that you know. For me, I've worked on the product side of business along the way. Uh, you know, we talked about drop shipping and building computers. There's always going to be pivots. And I think people shouldn't be afraid to pivot or shouldn't be afraid to quit one thing and move to, you know, something else. And I even wrote an article recently about being a quitter. You know, I think being a quitter gets a bad rap. I think there's something to be said to, you know, quitting what isn't working and trying something new. And again, it doesn't mean completely throwing away your product or your website or whatever it is, but it just means don't be so sold out on your your widget, whatever it may be, that you you don't open your thoughts up to trying something new or different. Absolutely, uh, that that makes me curious. Can you think of a of a time in your career, or um, you know, even recently, when maybe you realized something wasn't working and you had to pivot? Like, yeah. is there a, a story? Yeah, you can tell absolutely. us about that. I mean, just being here at Lenovo. Uh, you know, for the past five years, uh, I, you know, I was born and raised in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And, um, you know, I, when I moved from there at 38, 39, um, that was a complete pivot because I had to upload my family. Um, I have four kids, a wife and a dog. And, um, Mm -hmm. you know, we have to upload everyone and move them out to Lenovo and do this new thing that was global. It was scary because, I really, again, you know, as I mentioned, I didn't do anything globally before that. So a lot of it was new experiences, but I knew I had to remove myself or at least change the trajectory of my career by moving Mm -hmm. out of the North American business and try to start getting my hands into the global sector because I knew it would open up new avenues, new insights for me. And um, that's exactly what it did. So 
moving to Raleigh, North Carolina was a huge pivot for me and it was scary as hell. Um, but it worked out for the better. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. That that's cool. I think that that gives, uh, everyone a little bit more courage, you know, yeah. cause I mean, you had a whole family, a dog, everything. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> that's a lot, that's a lot of stuff that could potentially, you know, like almost hold you back from those big, scary life decisions and big moves, but you took the, the leap of faith and it worked out. That's, that's very encouraging. Yeah. I love that. And story. along the way, there's always decisions that I'm making in business or turning down other opportunities, whether you have people that, you know, while being at Lenovo, they're interested in, you know, you being a part of their team and you have to weigh your options and say, no, you don't, you know what, I don't want to do another pivot and move to LA at least this period in my life. And so we are always making decisions and obviously everybody is trying to make the right decision, but you know, mm. people have to, you know, and I, I'm speaking to myself in this regard too. We have to s- stop, you know, underestimating, you know, the, the, the internal gut feeling that we have about things. And sometimes it doesn't feel right, or there's less money or there's, you know, you know, you just have to look at things a lot closer. Sometimes we're too close up on the painting and you have to step back a little bit and appreciate it for Mm, what it is. That's good, man. Who are some entrepreneurs or people, you know, leaders in the industry who you follow or that especially inspire you? You know, uh, so this is going to sound, this is going to sound really horrible, but I I don't have people necessarily in the industry that inspire me. The people that inspire mm. me are kind of outside the industry. And, you know, like I've always been inspired by uh, Muhammad Ali, Albert Einstein, my dad, um, my, my mom's dad. So my grandfather, um, th- those are kind of people that push my drive. You know, I, I go to conferences and I glean from the knowledge of people and I appreciate, you know, the value that they bring, but there's never really anyone that I look at and I say, wow, that is the guy that at point B, I want to be, it's, it's, you know, really, I try to outside of business, Alex, I kind of, I kind of look at other things to inspire me and drive and motivate me. And, and there's really nobody in business per se that, that does that for me. It's kind of people that I look at outside and sometimes older figures that we're familiar with Mahatma Gandhi and people like that, that kind of inspired me. Absolutely. And I think that's wise for anyone in any industry doing anything serious for your work. I think if you want to stand out and if you want to be uniquely you in whatever job you're pursuing, I think if you're looking at all the industry leaders and what you are already doing all day, every day, then you're just going to be like a carbon copy oh, totally. of, of them. But if you're drawing inspiration, like, like you're saying from, you know, people of the past or people who are, you know, directly, you know, related to you or just people in other industries, even who have done things way different than you, that'll just inspire you to grow into your unique self and in, in your industry and in exactly what you do. Yeah, that that's a that's a great point because that's that's exactly the way the way I see it, right? If you kind of want to be original and have an original voice, and you know, I realized when once uh, Gary V hit the scene, everybody went up and tried to do conferences, and they were cussing and doing all this stuff, and it's like, yeah, it doesn't feel natural, man. You don't, <laughs> you know, I, I, I want people to have their own vibes, and man, so that's a really good point. I mean, even again outside of work. So I work for a Chinese company. Lenovo is a Chinese company, but I don't go off and get computer books and read those. I read a book by Henry Kissinger called On China, so which dealt mm. a lot with the cultures and different stuff. So again, I I really approach business a little different. I don't really drown myself in business books and self-help books. I really try to, I'm still doing a, kind of a more of a soul journey about myself and then apply that to business in some respects. Mm. Priest, that's so good, man. So where can people stay up to date with you and what you're up to? Where would you prefer them connect with you online? Yeah, yeah. So I, you know, I have a site, priestwillis.com. Um, on there you'll you can, you know, see some of my writings or, you know, hear interviews or whatever it may be. Um, if they want to stay connected with me or interested in uh affiliate program or something along those lines, I'm at pwillis at Lenovo.com. Uh, is my email address. And then Twitter. Twitter is the best spot to hit me up at Priest Willis. 
Got it. Man, thank you so much for being on. I love this conversation. And I really like that we could talk about, you know, on the show, we've talked a lot about crowdfunding and different marketing strategies and things like that. They're practical and great. But I also love, you know, getting a little bit to the heart of why we do what we do. And I think you you personify that, man. Yeah, appreciate it. You've been awesome, man. I really do appreciate it. And thank you for your time. Absolutely, man. Well, thanks for being on, Priest. That was my interview with Priest Willis Sr. So please go check out the links in the show notes to connect with him online and follow everything he is up to. Thanks for being on the show, Priest. This podcast is made by GadgetFlow, and we are proud to be the number one platform to find new and awesome gadgets. So make sure to check out the site for all the new products we're curating every single day. We'll be back next week with another new episode. So in the meantime, please go rate and review our podcast on iTunes. Thank you so much for listening to the Gadget Flow Podcast.